Thompson here speak TV. It's an honor to be here with the controller of the state of New York himself, Mr. Tom Denopoli. Thank you so much for your time. Great to be with you. How's it going as far as the state's finances? So what's the status of our budget? Well, we continue to be in a very tough uh, fiscal situation. This economy has hit us very hard. Revenues have been uh, weaker than anybody would like them to be. As you know, this budget process this year has um, uh, really been a broken process. The uh, budget is still not completed. The legislature is going to be back uh, in session this week. We hope finally the overdue budget, the final piece of it, will be put in place. But it really underscores the need for fundamental reform of the budget process. And uh, uh, we need to keep in mind that uh, we've kind of backed into the budget. It's been done on a piecemeal basis. The governor included as part of the emergency extenders pieces of the budget. So state government has been functioning, and uh, the threat of a shutdown that was there a few weeks ago, that's certainly not there anymore. But there's still the one big budget bill on revenue that has to be acted upon before we can say the budget's complete. And even when that's done, we have to monitor spending and revenues very carefully because it's going to be a very tight cash flow situation. Now, you're running for your first elected term as control. Very uh, tumultuous period of time. Uh, what are some of your accomplishments in the past three and a half years? Well, the importance of the controller's office really is uh, in promoting accountability and being, being a watchdog for the taxpayer dollars. So we put a, a high priority on audits of, of state agencies and on local governments with our, our significant expenses. We were able to complete ahead of schedule our audit of uh, our order process of every school district uh, in the state. Uh, we identified hundreds of millions of dollars of opportunities to save money for, for taxpayers. We've stepped up our audits and oversight on big expense areas, the MTA, very important issue to people, uh, certainly in the downstate part of uh, New York, and on the Medicaid program, a growing expense area uh, that affects all New Yorkers. So uh, that issue of accountability has been an important one. Straightening out the management of the pension fund, I inherited a mess with that situation, as everybody <coughs> might recall. We've changed our procedures in a way that people could have uh, more confidence that we're doing uh, our evaluation of investment opportunities in, a, in an appropriate way. And from a performance point of view, we've been weathering a very, very tough investment climate. Uh, and our fund, uh, Pew Center put out a report early this year, New York had the best funded public pension plan of any state. And then, of course, what we just talked about briefly, managing uh, the oversight of, this, of um, state finances, being very clear about the reality of the challenges facing us with our budget. Now you also inherited an investigation of the uh, pension fund by the Office of the Attorney General. I think your name has been mentioned in some capacity. Can you tell us what the status of the investigation and your role? In the well, you know, a, a, as you point out, uh, uh, shortly after I became controller, there were revelations about some difficulties with the uh, management of the pension fund. We've instituted a series of reforms, uh, with ban placement agents, any deal and uh, transaction involving a placement agent, more accountability in terms of transparency of, of, of reporting of our transactions, and implementing a pay-to-play ban uh, ahead of even the SEC doing that. Uh, with regard to the investigations, it's SEC, Attorney General, Walton District Attorney, we've certainly been uh, providing whatever information that, uh, that uh, they've been asking for. As you know, there have been some charges that have come out of those investigations revol revolving around the prior administration. Uh, you know, the status of those investigations, that, that's, uh, you know, uh, a question more appropriate for those who are doing the investigation, but we continue to, to be helpful in the way that we can. Are you continuing to get inquiries from the, uh, from the Attorney General, yep. to, uh, you personally, about your... A again, in terms of, of uh, the legality situation, we have to we have to refer those questions to, to those folks. But whatever information may be asked for, we, we, we share, uh, you know, certainly in, in our interest to be sure that people have confidence in how the pension fund is managed. Now, in the past, uh, state controllers have, uh, over the last, I think of this, these last 20 years or so, invested pension funds in state of Israel bonds uh, as, a, as a good investment as well as a, a sort of support for Israel. Are you continuing to do that? We, we are continuing to do that. It, I think, as you point out, it's, it's been a very good investment. So at a time of turbulence uh, in the markets, state of Israel bonds have been a it's very... the high-tech sector there, so... Well, the, the economy has been doing well. We certainly we do State of Israel bonds. We, we also uh, have invested in the uh, Israel Electric Company, and uh, we also have private equity investments as well. So we, we've, we've uh, continued and grown uh, the, you know, the uh, commitment to in, in investing uh, in Israel, and particularly with, with regard to Israel bonds. It's been a very secure part of our fixed income portfolio. What's the current amount that you have invested in Israel? Uh, well, you'd have to accumulate the different pieces. Um, so you've got between the, the fixed income side, the private equity side, uh, you know, about three hundred million. Okay, and that's that's an uh, increase from previous. Some of it's a carryover of previous, and some of when some of the Israel state of Israel bonds have come due, we've been re, you know 
we, we, we upped our, 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 our commitment to it. So our, our commitment has been significant and it continues. Are you divesting from companies that do business with Iran? That's been a very important issue that we've, we've been dealing with uh, shortly after I became controller. Uh, we, we took a look at two uh, world situations that we felt posed a threat to our investments. As a fiduciary, my responsibility is looking out for the interest of the fund and those the retirees who stand to benefit from the fund. So we have to make decisions about investments based on what's what's good for the fund. I have a real concern about the uh, the regimes operating in Iran and in the Sudan as well. In the case of the Darfur region of Sudan, you, you've had actual genocide happening on the ground. In the case of Iran, You've, you have the, the inflammatory rhetoric of the president, Ahmadinejad, talking about wiping Israel off the face of the map, uh, basically calling for the destruction of the state of Israel, trying to become a nuclear power and have, have that capability. To me, his words uh, on behalf of the regime are an incitement to genocide. Mm -hmm. So our, our trigger for an evaluation of whether or not uh, to, um, to continue to invest in companies that have a presence there uh, was based on that issue of genocide. After doing a, a thoughtful analysis and seeing how we could substitute those investments with other investments, we have divested from companies that have been operating in both of those uh, countries to the tune of um, over $86 million. Uh, uh, we also have a number of companies where they have indicated that they're going to be pulling back their operations. We put them on a freeze list where we won't buy any additional investments until we see how the, their function. So New York has become a leader in the effort to put pressure uh, to bear and, and on companies that are continuing to operate uh, in Iran and in Sudan, and, and I'm very proud of the leadership role we've taken in this area. Now, the uh, the pension fund is a multi-billion-dollar expense uh, for the state, and um, there are calls right now for people saying to rein it in to make it a little bit more like the private sector. What is your view on that? Well, I, I support a defined benefit pension mm -hmm. plan. I think it's been an important uh, benefit that that, that uh, helps people continue to want to be in, 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 in state service or local government service. We have made some changes, though, and, and, and people need to be aware of this. And this applies to the New York State system, not, in, you know, that's what we're talking about. There are other pension plans, you know, in the, in the state for the city and, and with the teacher system as well. But we have a new tier. A, a new tier applies to new employees where they have a longer period of time to vest for a pension where they have to do lifetime contributions and where there's a cap on the amount of overtime that could be applied to their final average salary. So as more people are hired after January of this year, that's going to have a positive impact in terms of the cost of the pensions. And I think that was an appropriate response to the reality uh, that the cost has been going up, particularly with regard to the very tough investment climate that we had, uh, especially in the years of uh, 08 and 09. One of the big issues taking place this election year is the uh, so-called mosque at ground zero. Uh, it's taking a role in all the electoral election debates. Uh, is, first of all, do you, what is your feeling about it? And what is, do you feel there should be some fiscal oversight of the uh, expenses and the funding of that uh, organization? Well, I, you know, I, I think from a national security perspective, obviously we, we have a new awareness after 9-11. So any, any situation uh, where there's any question about funding should be looked at. Uh, there's no doubt about that. America is founded on many uh, important principles. One of them is, is freedom of worship, and that's been a very cherished part of the American uh, of the, of the American uh, foundation of our society. Uh, so I, I think we need to be very protective of that. Obviously, there are certain administrative decisions that are going on. You know, at the city level, we'll see how that uh, how that plays out. But uh, 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 you know, those are my feelings in terms of, of, of that issue generally. Control Tom Denapoli, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you.